In this video I will show you how I rebuilt my old Waron and turned it from this to this. And it was quite a journey with a lot of challenges and a few issues. So without further ado, let's get started. This is my old Waron 2.4 that I built about a year ago, so let's first disassemble it. It printed just fine until about three weeks ago. Ever since that I was basically busy fixing one issue after another after another until I eventually gave up and decided to, well, just rebuild it from the ground up. Because when I first built this Voron, I didn't have a machine that could print ABS reliably. So I printed only some parts in ABS and the rest is printed in PLA, which came back to haunt me. PLA is not very heat resistant and, well, a 3D printer has elements that are heated, so most of the parts I printed in PLA broke eventually. I also printed the parts of the Voron in multiple different colors, which made it look very chaotic and not as nice as it could be. For the rebuild, I decided to challenge myself a little bit and built the whole Voron in white. I want to use as many white parts as possible but more on that later. This is how many 3D printed parts a Voron actually has, if you ever wondered. And these are the rest of the parts of a Voron after it is completely disassembled. Now I mentioned before that I wanted to build the whole Voron in white, so I had to spray paint some parts of the Voron. I simply spray painted the Voron with some primer first and then some white spray paint. This holds up surprisingly well, but if I scratch over the painted parts with something sharp, then the paint will come off anyway. The only way that I could permanently color the aluminum is by electroplating it, but I don't really have the means to do that. So painting is all I can do for now. This time I printed all of the parts in ABS to make sure that all of the parts can sustain the heat inside of the heated chamber and near the heated element. I followed the official assembly guide for the Voron 2.4. If you never built a Voron before, then I highly recommend doing so. It is a great project and you will learn a lot about 3D printers and how 3D printers work in the first place. And the assembly instructions are very good and very easy to follow. All that is left now is reassembling the new Voron with the newly printed ABS parts. The Warren parts use heated inserts to assemble all of the parts. I highly recommend getting a heated insert tip for your soldering iron. It makes installing the heated insert just so much easier. By the way, I printed all of these parts on my modified P1P with the vision enclosure. And the print quality of these parts is on a whole different level than my old parts. And now let's get to the first upgrade to the new Voron, if you can call it that. This is the Gnome from Big Tree Tech. It is essentially a small status screen that can be installed on the Stealth Burner printhead. All you have to do to get the Gnome screen running is supply it with power and then connect it to your Wi-Fi and enter the IP address of your Voron Clipper server. 
The Konomi will pull all of the status information and display it on its own. My old Warren had the classic printhead, but I decided to upgrade it to the newer Stealth Burner printhead for the rebuild. I also installed the RGBs into the Stealth Burner. I hand soldered the LEDs, but you can also buy the LEDs already assembled and with the correct cable length for the Stealth Burner. You also have to print a separate part in a transparent filament for the Warren logo, so that the LED can shine through that, but I found a different solution. I simply printed the cover of the transparent part and filled it with some UV resin. Then I cured the resin with UV lights. The finished piece is still a little bit too clear, so I sanded the part a little bit down to make it a bit foggy. This will diffuse the light much better. I then installed the two fans inside the stealth burner. Make sure to install them in the correct orientation. If you don't, then you will end up with fans that are blowing in the wrong direction. This actually happened to me when I started my first Voron. And with that, we get to the next upgrade, a PCB board for the sensors and the fans on the printhead. I chose the EBB from Big Tree Tech. By the way, there are links to all of the upgrades I used in the description down below. The EBB comes in two parts, one for the fans and LEDs and one for the rest of the sensors, the heat cartridge and the stepper motor on the other half of the printhead. All I have to do is assemble the printhead and connect all of the fans, sensors and the extruder to the two PCBs. Oh, and by the way, this is what my table looks like when I am working on a project. I installed the old cable chains, but it actually bothered me more that they are black than I thought. So I simply printed some cable chains in white ABS. And they work surprisingly well. I'm not quite sure how well they will hold up, but there's nothing I can do but wait and see. So for now, these are my new cable chains. I also reinstalled all of the electronics and it looks much, much tidier this time around. And with that I can finally turn on the rebuilt Voron for the first time. Oh yeah, and I also replaced the old PE build plate with a Garolite plate. Garolite is also called G10 and it is a epoxy resin and glass fiber mixture that comes in all kinds of colors, including white. And now we come to the calibration step, and this step can easily take just as much time as building the whole printer. Trust me, it can take a very long time to calibrate a Voron correctly. All of the calibration prints worked out great, but the stringing test print really got me. It took me a lot of test printing before I found the right settings. But finally, it was time for the first proper print. And it went horribly. There was a big layer shift mid-printing. I tried to print this model several times 
and I had the same issues again and again. Eventually I found a loose screw on the belt tightener for the X and Y belts that got loose during printing and caused the layer shift. And after fixing that, the print finished successfully. I am becoming a fan of the Garolite print plate, by the way. Prints adhere really well to it, and once cooled down, you can easily remove the prints with almost no force at all. I printed the axolotl with this Macro 3D filament from Zero that was kindly provided to me. There is a link in the description below with a little discount code, if you are interested. It is a color gradient filament, though you can't see it with this print, because it's just too small. The effect is probably much, much better with a bigger print. But now, let's take a look at the finished all-white rebuilt Voron. I hope you enjoyed the video. All of the links for the materials and the 3D prints used in this video are in the description down below. And let me know, have you ever built a Voron before and does it look as good or maybe even better than my old white Voron? Also, I don't have any skirts printed yet because I don't really like the Voron skirts. So let me know if you know any better looking alternatives.